What's up guys? This is Tampa Tech. If you have an LG TV that turns on but it shows no picture, hopefully this video will help you out. Using your cell phone, turn on the flashlight and see if you get an image. If you do, then you most likely have a bad backlight circuit. Step one is to troubleshoot. After confirming the TCOM board and LCD is good, then proceed to replace the LED strips by removing the back cover. Step two, remove the standby light assembly. Step three, remove the bezel by popping the clips. Step four, remove the bezel and put it somewhere safe. Step five, using a mini Phillips screwdriver, remove all the screws from the side of the LCD brackets. Step six, hold the front of the LCD panel and flip over the TV carefully. Be sure to clamp down around the front of the LCD panel so they don't fall out. Step seven, remove the LCD brackets. They are labeled top, bottom, and side. Step eight, unclip the TCOM board cables from the LCD buffer boards. Carefully remove the buffer boards using this method. Step nine, slide out the buffer boards and use painter's tape to hold them in place. Step 10, use gloves and two people or suction cups to lift up on the LCD. This is very fragile, it will crack if it's mishandled or flexed too much. Step 11, unclip and remove the LCD panel holder. If some of the clips get stuck on, just use your thumb and pry forward. Step 12, remove all the filter panels together to prevent dust from getting between them. These films are basically the polarizer, diffuser, and reflector films. Step 13, if you have a LED backlight tester, which is available on Amazon, see the link in the video description below, check each of the LED strips. This fourth strip is bad. It doesn't even light up. One bad LED strip can shut down the whole backlight circuit as a safety feature. I ordered the LED repair kit from shopjimmy.com. See the link in the video description below. Confirm you have the correct part numbers by looking at the number on the LED strips. Step 14, use painter's tape to hold back the back light cover. Step 15, use a heat gun or hot hair dryer to loosen the LED strips and use a pry tool to remove the LED strips. Each LED strip is either labeled L1 or R1, L2 or R2. In the Star Wars edition, it's labeled R2-D2. The L means left side and the R means right side.
Step 16, replace L1 with L1 LED strip and R1 with R1 LED strip. Remove the tape from the back and then install them by pressing down firmly. It's always a good idea to test the LED strips after replacing the LED strips to make sure they work. Step 17, repeat the process but make sure each of the LED strips match the part number. Step 18, I'm going to use Shop Jimmy's method and use a razor to cut out the middle LED strip. The reason why we do this is so that we don't have to remove the circuit boards from the TV set. That saves us about 10 minutes of our time. After installing and testing the LED strip, use a small strip of tape to hold the cover together.
If you want to save some money and you don't want to replace the LED strips, you can replace the individual bad LEDs from the LED strips, but this is more tedious and it's going to take a lot more time and sometimes the LEDs may not look or seem defective and it can still be defective causing the circuit to shut down. So it's highly recommended just replacing all the LED strips instead of the individual LEDs. The second method will save you about $100. After removing the bad LED using a pair of tweezers, use a desoldering wick to clean the surface so you are prepared to install the new LED. I'm using 6040 leaded flux core solder. Don't use lead free solder. It doesn't last or hold up as long as leaded solder. There's two parts of that soldering pad. There's the thin and the fat soldering pads. Do not bridge those connections. If you do, then use the soldering wick to break that bridge. The LED only goes one direction to light up. Make sure you have it in the correct direction. You can use the LED tester to make sure it is in the correct direction after you're done installing. After about 30 seconds, you should see the LED settle into place. Without the diffuser lens, it's going to look brighter than the other LEDs. Just use super glue to install that diffuser lens back on. Step 19, grab all the films and then slowly lay down all the films on top of the TV set. You'll notice on the outskirts of the films there are tabs. Make sure they're all lined up perfectly when installing them. Make sure all the films tabs are inserted correctly or else the bezel won't install properly. Step 20, clamp on the plastic frame. Use painter's tape to remove the dust from the panel. I highly recommend using gloves. I forgot mine. You can remove fingerprints by using a microfiber cloth. Using gloves, carefully lay down the LCD panel into place. Make sure the LCD panel edges sit flush on all sides. Remember, these brackets are labeled. Don't force anything in. If the bracket does not fit, examine why first. I had the part backwards, that's why it wasn't fitting correctly.
If the screw holes are not lined up properly, the screws won't go in. So keep that in mind. Next, install the outer bezel. Make sure all the clips are locked in. Connect the standby light assembly onto the TV set and then connect the ribbon cable connections to the buffer boards and then the back cover. Plug in the power and test it out. All right, turn on the TV. The red standby light should go away. We got a backlight glow, that's great, and a picture. TV's fixed. Smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest tech videos.